be sore, be grace, and today I've got a treat for us. I have got a fellow astrologer on with us, Mr. Gary Canton, and we're already in Mercury retrograde, so we're going to talk about Mercury retrograde, especially since Mercury retrograde has come back into the energy of Aquarius, and there's always three parts to a retrograde. It's where we're going to do one part of the shadow, then we're going to have a direct motion, then it's going to come out of retrograde, and then we actually, in that last part, kind of need to unpack everything that happens. So three or four different angles on what the retrograde looks like, but what's happening in it? What should we be doing? What's actually happening in the sky? We're gonna talk about all of that good stuff today. So get your emotional seatbelts buckled and, and let's welcome Gary and see what the heck we should all be doing with this retrograde. So welcome Gary, thank you for agreeing yeah. to come on. Thank you so much for having me, Stormy. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, we're on the program with astrology hub this year and so when you reached out i was just like yeah let's do it and i'm really happy to be here it's so neat right to get to go out and connect and my um my audience for sure has gotten to watch me grow up in public with this business <laughs> so to even have the opportunities to join the industry a little bit more and join people and and have them is it's a big yeah. deal and it's a fun deal over here and i think it's what astrology is, right? It's we're supposed to be growing. We're supposed to yeah, be Yeah, absolutely. Fun. Yeah, I was going to say, don't let this fool you into thinking I'm growing up because I'm still <laughs> working on myself. <laughs> right? Who is it? Who is it? Oh my gosh. So, Mercury retrograde, this one, this year, we've got retrogrades that kind of repeat this energy here in water. We touch into air a little bit, but there's a lot of water. And last year, what I talked about is the retrograde and how you can work with it via your different elements in your chart, if you have a high elemental chart or whatever. So what is your take? I just, I want to hear some Gary. Yeah, I mean, th so the elements are really powerful. I mean, I, honestly, I think that if, if all you ever do and talk about is the elements, you kind of can't go wrong, seriously. They're that, you know, pardon the pun, they're that fundamental or elemental, you know, that um, it's really powerful stuff. And, you know, we were talking about, I mean, consciously, I've been reaching out to people these last couple of years because what is the element water? It's moist. And moistness is the quality of coming together and togetherness, you know. And so um, I've been reaching out to people and doing more interviews myself. And so when you said, you know you wanted to connect i was just like automatically yes because that's what water is about it's about connection right and um and so but you know what happens is is that the connections get sort of challenged or stirred up or um things get a little woo, you know and 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 i think that um you know you used the word cosmic conspiracy before i heard you say and i think that's really right on because if you think about what Hermes did in the myth, you know, when he, he, he reorganized everything to make room for something new. Mm -hmm. So he, he did this thing where he stole Apollo's cattle and then he um, sacrificed two of them and he divided up the meat in a specific way. And then he sang this song and he was like literally like ritually making room in the cosmos for something new to come into being yeah and that's what's happening during the mercury retrogrades is that something we're we're making room for something new and if we can get out of the way of these you know um cosmic happenings and not try to fix it or just get back to normal but say like wait what is this opening up room for then i think we, we can really actually have some pretty interesting things happen I think so too. And it's almost this idea in that opening where taking what I've been looking at and working on for a year, a couple years, so it's already here. It's already there in my life. I don't have to go create or have something brand new drop down, but it's almost like it takes me backwards to a whole new perspective of looking at the very old thing that's still there and how I can allow that to be different. And I don't know about your experience, but in the energy of Pisces, it's a very much so an energy where I've had to say, how can I just literally get out of the way to yeah. allow it to be? Because yeah. maybe I'm stopping what's trying to be. Surrendering, you know, my wife and I were having a conversation in the coffee shop the other day about, you know, we're, there's something in our personal life that we're trying to make happen. And it's just not happening. And, and I was talking about, well, you know, 
maybe it's not time. Maybe it's not, you know, and then she challenged me with like something, well, maybe it's not this. And I was like, wow, I hadn't thought about that, you know, but trying to, trying to force things is often not going to work. And, and, and just understanding like, what is the cosmic will at this time and trying to surrender to that. Yeah, that's, that's a huge Pisces lesson. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And what you said about like, um just uh flowing with things that are already in action that's that's what's interesting to me is that as we go from pisces into aquarius what's happening now is we were working on pisces and we were working on pisces last year too mm -hmm. yeah so that was the part where we'd already been working on this but the aquarius thing is new we haven't had a mercury retrograde in aquarius for about seven years so this is like a preview. Now we're getting this little preview of the stuff that's going to be coming up next year in 2021 and 2022. So mm -hmm. this little part that we're coming into now with the Aquarius is going to be maybe a little bit different where we start to see, oh, you know, and uh, that thing that I was talking about before where it just doesn't seem to be the right time for whatever. What's interesting is today, that thing that we were working on and we were it was yeah. stuck, today we got like, maybe a breakthrough with it or energy's moving anyway and i'm like ah you know so yeah. maybe maybe yeah we were you know we were trying to do it in the water element and it was really you know the air element was the time for that to happen absolutely especially okay. since air has that quality of being able to hover above what is and maybe pull a little bit more of an, an intellectual card out yeah. of the box and say well, you haven't thought of it this way. I love that that's what you were saying. And it's like, I look at just in the cycle of people's worlds right now anyways, if we step back about seven years for just about everybody, there was a thing they started and just couldn't get it to stick, but it came from this creative, intuitive, scary, but hopeful place. And now as we hit that Aquarian energy, that will go forward. That will go forward. Yeah, and there's, as you know, there's a huge boost of Aquarian energy coming down the pipe at the end of the year, you know, with Jupiter, Saturn, and that's really a, like a 20 year theme, right? Yeah. So yeah, so this is, this is also, even though this is at the tail end of Aquarius, it's also a preview of that. We're also getting a preview of some really big stuff that's coming down the pipe, um, you know, and so, yeah, and the difference between air and water is that water you know, the alchemical symbol for water is a downward pointing triangle. So it's about going in and really, you know, getting into your gut and like, what am I feeling, you know? And whereas with water, the symbol is an upward pointing. It's about getting out there and just doing it, trusting your feeling enough to just do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a very courageous energy because in air the thing i i love about that quality is it is genuinely enough detachment from the emotion to just kind of say f it <laughs> and take an action right or i don't know let me just i'm gonna i'm gonna just do it it's very much so that quality where it's like sometimes i feel like when we talk about air energies and we talk about that ability to detach everybody runs into them being very cold and i'm like that's that's not it we need that quality sometimes too, or we'll never do anything. And I'm a Taurus. I'll never move. I'll never move if I don't get enough air going, you know? <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. I have Mars and Taurus. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> you do. You do my, know. Oh my God. <laughs> my wife would my wife would love to talk to you about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain. And what's what's take your moon's age to get anything done, which in the country where I live, that means a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's your um what's your primary element of, of your energies though? Your chart. In my chart, my birth chart, mm -hmm. fire and earth. Oh, okay. That's yeah. okay. Mine are earth and air. Ah. I yeah. know. Which is why I'm like, you can really, I will sit and think about things and they are some of the best things, but to get that bad boy in motion. Yeah. 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 Earth, Earth again is like, you know, downward pointing all the interesting stuff about Earth. You have to dig down in there to get all the crystals and all the right. So, you know, and the wonderful thing about Earth people is they're usually very multifaceted, very multi talented, right? Because the, look at all the different kinds of crystals inside the Earth and all the different strata and layers and 
you know? And so they're often sort of quiet and you don't understand right away, but they are really like multifaceted, multi-talented people usually. And that's, that's what I say that, um, you know, you really can't go wrong sticking with the elements because they're so fundamental and so profound. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I have Aquarius rising, so I'm pretty excited about all this Aquarian energy and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that uh, it really represents this kind of new sort of opening, this new sort of progressive energy that, you know, because the, th the thing about Aquarius in the classical astrology, right, is that it is ruled by Saturn. Yes. But, it, but, it, but the difference between the rulership of Capricorn, right, earth down and in mm -hmm. it's like a closed system like capricorn is like if you don't got a membership card you don't get in <laughs> right you gotta you've gotta you've gotta have that 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 degree on the wall right you yeah. are, and how and i'll tell you you know we, you can talk about privilege and stuff but there's an amount of privilege that comes with that i mean even me as a white straight white male and all the privilege that comes with that i've been told no for jobs simply because i didn't have the right piece of paper right you no, know, and that's a very Capricorn thing. Um, but with Aquarius, it's like it's about opening those boundaries and saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, maybe you don't have all the, the traditional paper, but you've got some life experience. You've got this. Let's find a way to make this work, right? It's about mm -hmm. opening up the boundaries and like letting things flow a little bit more, you know? Yeah. So that's the wonderful thing about Aquarius. And it's interesting. We don't even need uranus to rule aquarius to have that opening and that experimentation and that sense of um brother sisterhood etc right right um, but i do love the interesting innovative kind of twist that uranus does bring to that energy because it's almost like i was talking about this in in the um march videos that because saturn does rule capricorn and it's so concrete that it's like he has all this land and he develops him a starbucks and everybody lives in the Starbucks, but then he moves into Aquarius, and for whatever reason, he's on the roof of his Starbucks, and he's like, look, I've got all this land. I, I should do something with everything else that's out here, but what comes of it is typically so different than what we thought we were going to do with it, right? It is that inventive, innovate, spark of genius, um, Uranian, Aquarian kind of combination, plus during uh, this time, we've got Uranus and Venus. Right? So it has value. It has mm. quality to yeah. it. But it's yeah. going to be uniquely what I perceive to be valuable and quality. Mm -hmm. Right? So I love that interesting mix in there. Yeah. And the other thing is when you actually get out of your Starbucks or whatever closed system you were in, right? And you, and you get up on the roof and you see these possibilities, but then you get out there on the land and you start talking with your neighbors and they've got different ideas. And this... And you go, oh, I, it's like what my wife said. I never thought about that. And then you start thinking about it a little bit. The next thing you know, what you thought you were going to do changes simply because if you're listening, you know, you've got, you get input from a variety of sources and you get this nice mixing of ideas that creates something you would never have imagined before yeah. because of the mixing that, that happens. You know, that's the wonderful thing about air is it's free to flow and move around and mix you know, d different things. So that detachment from, cause you know, you can get stuck in some feelings and be like, yeah. oh, I feel depressed. I'm just not even gonna go outside the door today or whatever, right? Yeah. But with yeah. the air thing, once you get out that door, you go, wow, now that I'm outside, I feel a little better. And you know, maybe I'll talk to Joe or Jane across the street and wow, they had, you know what I'm saying? And the whole thing just become, it takes on a life of its own. Yeah. Which is really, I think, one of the, like you said, the, the you know, the cosmic um, coincidences, you know, those are the, that's the beauty of the retrograde process is that it, it opens our minds to possibilities that we weren't aware of. And it's almost like, you know, there's something that the community or, or universe or whatever you want to call it, there's a collective need that maybe we aren't personally aware of. And things got to get stirred up so that we can get pushed out of our comfort zone. Like, hey, this is what's needed. Hello, like over here, not over there where you're in your rut, 
but over here, man. <laughs> yeah, because I think that um, something I'm aware of in the Pisces energy is kind of this idea of I have this issue or I have this whatever that I've got over here, but I'm the only one who's got it, right? Like I feel alone, I've made myself alone, whatever that looks like. And so truly, as, as we explore these Aquarian energies, and then when Saturn comes over, Saturn to me is like, I'm, I'm not really interested in if you'd like to grow up. I'm going to need you to come to the next level, right? So in Aquarius, I think it says, you're not the only one. Come over here and get some help. And it's a we kind of deal, Absolutely. right? Which is so good because I think about, you know, I don't, I don't know what it's like where you're at, but here, everywhere you go in Colorado Springs, it's the opioid crisis. We're under an opioid yeah. crisis, right? Yeah. So we've got that and very Piscean very Piscean, and it's like, uh-oh, we're going to have to band together to not only figure out what to do about that, but those that are affected and afflicted, they're going to need each other, right? So it's, it's kind of that idea of wherever the grouping is, Saturn's like, I'm not interested if you want to help the grouping, I need you to get it together and come on. <laughs> yeah. Bring no, that's you. A, yeah, that's a really good, I mean, we are the safety net, right? Mm -hmm. really like you and me and everybody you know we and and the thing is you know we you can that that feeling of isolation and separateness that doesn't benefit anybody but the you know the people who are already rich and powerful and all that stuff if us coming together empowers us and and um and we can take care of one another then you know we're going to have more power to demand more of those people you know at the top and so on and so forth so it's like it's a very grassroots i think there's a grassroots element of, of aquarius that is often underestimated too yeah. that yeah. speaks to what you're talking about like yeah that there's a coming together and there's a sense of um brother sisterhood commonality um like a, just a heart connection that that fuels something where you know because when you're alone, when you feel lonely and isolated, man, to have any sense of connection, it's like a lifeline. It's like literally, it's like literally you just got, you know, your battery was like, you know, down to one bar or whatever. And all of a sudden you're plugged in, man, your battery's charging. And now you can, you know, you've got some, you can get some things done and so forth. Yeah. And I think that's super in interesting too, because I do think like on, on the 16th, when we began the dance of the Mercury actual retrograding with um, Mercury challenging the moon right then, it was like, you're, we're going to rethink what we think we know about our ourselves and they're the the issues they're not the small ones i don't think i think they're the big issues that we've had an attachment to a big belief we've had an attachment to and now we're challenged here to look back at that and say does that really fit your current honest reality and 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 then as we're here back in the aquarian energy we have some courage to step that forward which is brilliant retrogrades are so useful yeah they really are they really bring help to keep things from becoming stagnant and stale and keep things moving. And like I said, um, you know, with the Aquarius thing, you're really getting a taste of something that's so, so even if something comes up now that's sort of frustrating or aggravating or, you know, or challenging, as you said, and, and don't feel like you have to figure it out now. Oh yeah. Just listen, accept it, make room for it. Mm -hmm. because it's going to be something you're working on you know going forward right but that idea that you talked about with the big issues that's definitely was the case for me because that thing when I you know when I was talking about you know we were having a conversation and well maybe it isn't time and then my wife was like well maybe it isn't this it was like she took it to a bigger place and I was like wow you know uh, okay, I need a minute. <laughs> right? Hold on. That is just uh, put me in the place. Down there, you know, I was trying to keep it down here, and that that's, you know, and yeah, it threw me off for a few days, but sure. in the end, I was glad that she brought it up because, um, and it turns out, I don't think it was that, but I was glad to have to, to kind of like be forced to re-examine that because it made me more confident in the end and and realize like yeah no like um yeah i think we just need to you know stick with 
what we're doing and just be open and just like patient and so forth, you know, mm -hmm. but that questioning and that, um, able to like open up your mind and consider different viewpoints. That's absolutely essential to any retrograde. Um, you know, I don't know. Do you, do you follow the politics at all? Do I follow this? We even want to go there. Let's not, let's not go there yet because I yeah. think that could be a whole other thing. <laughs> a whole other but game. I do absolutely follow that. And I gotta, I'll just say this. So I went yesterday and I dropped my ballot. And specifically because we are in a retrograde, I was like, some of these people are going to leave. So I need to wait to be clear on who to cast my vote for because I need to vote for somebody who's still in the damn race, right? And I am so grateful that I did because I was like, there you go. There you go, man. So we, <laughs> we need to do a whole nother that's thing on that. Much, yeah, gonna... That's pretty much what I was going to say. Like the story, how many times did the story change in the past couple of weeks about all that stuff? It's like, what the heck? Yes. And you know what's funny behind that is that my my mom, she's she's political. And she said, you know, you haven't dropped your ballot. And this was a conversation. And I kept telling her, I'm like, nope, the game's going to change. And she's like, if you don't get it in on time, I'm going to be so disappointed. And, and the internal hearing of that, this is my mom, she might be disappointed and realizing too, that I'm an adult. And I was like, no, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> right? like, I know what I'm doing and I have my reasoning for it, right? Because in all of the Saturn energy, I think every single one of us took on these ideas of our authority figures, these bigger ideas that we have had conceptions about. And yes. every single one of us has had to go, no, wait a minute, I'm a damn adult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? I'm going to be growing up all the way, but I'm growing up enough. Enough to yeah. know how to drop my ballot, right? <laughs> <laughs> right all right yeah. so we're in it we we see these things that we're undoing how can how can we be useful in this next little bit of time we've got just a few days of the mercury retrograde left so what do you think how can we use that the best well that's a really good question you know um it, in classical terms mercury has some dignity in aquarius in term because it's an air sign and the nature of air agrees with the nature of mercury, right? Kind of mental and whatever. But it's interesting because it's mostly in night charts where that dignity will come out. So in a night chart, Mercury and Aquarius will have this, what's called triplicity dignity, which is, the, which is basically the power of like extended family, community, etc. So I think that, um, you know, like maybe, um, hanging out with friends and family and stuff in the evening and exploring different social scenes. Maybe that you're not, and really picking up on the buzz because with air, it's about like those synchronicities that you talked about and also the buzz, like what are people, and it's not that you need to just like listen to what people are saying and automatically go along with that. But tuning into the buzz, it's almost like a tuning fork where you can, you know, and you feel that, you know, when you hear that vibration and you, then you get, feel it in you and you can either say, wow, that feels good. Give me some more. Or you can say, well, oh, that's kind of weird. And not, if it's kind of weird, not necessarily saying, you know, please go away, but more like just, wow, you know, what, what, what is that vibing in me? And is it something that I want to hold on to? Or is it something, or do I actually have something in me that can move out of the way to let that in? And, and so listening um, and just getting out there, you know, because again, air is kind of, you know, it's up, it's hot, it's up and out. So getting out, but I would say more like in the nighttime, like getting out and um, not necessarily partay, you know, so although, you know, hey, isn't some of that now and then is not a bad thing, <laughs> but just um, getting out there and, and being with people and, and, and listening to the buzz around you and just connecting because there's, there's something literally in the air, right, that you can catch. And I'm not talking about a virus, by the way. Right. Hopefully, yeah, right. hopefully we, that's a whole nother. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's two other videos, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I ordered, I got some zinc lozenges and, uh, you know, some, uh, what do you call it, hand sanitizer. So what more can you do? Right. You know? But yeah. keep your hands clean and, and uh, you know, if you feel funny, you know, do, 
the zinc is, I think, keeps the bacteria or whatever from growing in your, and getting into your respiratory tract. My goodness. And vitamin C, like basic stuff, man. Um, but yeah, getting out there, because you, because there's a vibe that you can catch that you can sort of tune into right now that, and it's going to, it's going to lead you somewhere. So we've got that, that we can use as these last couple days, um, to, to make it useful, but we're also going to have this full moon happening, right? As we've got a shift of direction. What do you think? I mean, I'm pumped. I, I feel like to me, I feel like that Virgo full moon is an opportunity for us to say thank you to that retrograde because we have seen some things. We have experienced some things. We have had our little, um, some of us will have had our pain buttons pushed in whatever way. Um, right. But there has been an acknowledgement of something that does need to shift and come forward. And in that Virgo energy, we get the opportunity to see step by step that it can be done that way. You don't have to eat the whole thing but that ultimately we were able to see it. And then we have Mercury out of retrograde and it's like, now we have some go forward permission. Yeah, I think that Virgo, that Virgo is such, I mean, it's such, so great at discrimination and really just understanding, okay, of all that, of all this stuff that's floating around here, like what's really mine? Mm -hmm. And what do I really need to own? And, and, and out of that, what's the most important thing that I can take from this and, and go for, you know, and just, you know, prioritizing and really like sorting through and um, prioritizing and figuring out, okay, from here, you know, steps one, two, three, and then off we go, you know, and really just kind of like, you know, sorting through stuff, owning what is yours and, you know, forgiving what's not or, you know, and, and then really figuring out, okay, what's my what's my steps what's my basic plan and then yeah off we go into the into the future you know yeah especially with that sun you know shining bright over there in pisces that's a lot of compassion it's a lot of empathy and i think for ourselves you know and then you've got this this moon over here and that's a hard balance sometimes is to have that that self empathy, right? That hey, you're doing the best you can, provided you're doing something, right? <laughs> right. That's the thing. It's like it's progress, not perfection. That's but right. a lot of God progress. If you haven't been doing anything, you know. You've been resting, and that's something. That right? is something. You know, and sometimes that's really, and and that's that's one of the things that I've had to remind myself is to is to get plenty of rest and to give myself time. As a creative person, you know, the last couple of years, I don't know about you, but I've had more work than I can possibly handle. Absolutely. And, and, it, and you were talking about like needing to know when to say no and, and like and boundaries and limits and knowing, knowing your own limits. And I've been really like firming up, doubling down on that and saying, yeah, I need time to rest. I need time to just like walk in the woods or to just like, to daydream you know because that's if you're creative that you can't you you can you that's like um recharging your batteries you know so that self-care uh, sorry about that let me turn that off the self-care that you're talking about um yeah like really really getting a firm um really getting a firm sense of like what exactly right virgo is going to give you really particular ideas about what exactly i need what to tweak my self-care routine going forward like here's a lesson i learned i really need this and i really need to take care of that better going forward right yeah yeah, yeah. virgo wants um the best right we say it's a nitpicky energy but it's because it wants to work at at the most um, with the most integrity it can to to be of service with what it is that it's doing and I have I'm, I'm a Virgo rising right uh, and so first of all the fact that I make videos at all is is amazing because they're never perfect, right like, <laughs> that has been a real life struggle my friends but this idea of if I'm so all over the place I can't possibly show up with integrity to be that servant leader in my life to be of service to the people around me so what can stay what can go but i've just had a whole season of looking back over right so it's like they work together a whole year works 
together as well as in its big cycles to just walk us gently cosmically to okay tune in pay attention yeah you know? yeah it's a really great point that about because a lot of people i don't know if they realize like this this full moon is the culmination of a new moon back in october uh, late september or no i guess it was late august august um, there was a new moon and it, that new moon hat was like conjunct Mercury, Venus, and Mars. That was a big time new moon. Yeah. So there was something that came into your life at that time that's now like coming to fruition. And it's it's sort of like planting the crop and then harvesting. Yeah. You know, wow. so that yeah, that's one of that's one of the most powerful tools that um, that you can use as well. Like really watching those new moons and then six months later the full moon in the same house yeah and really yeah understanding that that rhythm yeah and it, and it just around and around we go right and around <laughs> we go which is so fun because as i'm teaching and trying to bring people into the smaller cycles of just how to track this in every like you know 28 day period too looking back to that eclipse in denver and then in december my goodness and saying okay well, let's catch up with that bad boy mid-year and see what has happened. What has happened for you? Because it's it's awesome to watch how you've done the work or you've had to adjust the work through there. And 2020 is a year where every planet we have that can is going to retrograde. So <laughs> you know that there is some serious build a life on it foundations being set here, yeah. right? Because it's like build a little, oh, we got to go back over that. Build a little. we got. And so the next year in 2021, it's exciting because the stuff yeah. that happened in its application. Yeah, yeah. So now, and going back to that idea of being, you know, uh, kind and and with yourself and and allowing, like you said, up, oh, you know, up. Oh, thought I figured something out. Well, go back and just really being kind and patient with that because, yeah, that's the year we're in. Mm -hmm. and so you know, like understanding that that's just part of the whole thing, and that it's going to be a process, um, and there's no final answer really until next year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because we've got to, I mean, personally, but also we live in our global systems, so we've got to adjust and adjust to see where the application lands. So, I mean, I'm so pumped for 2021, but that's just because I am, but we still got to do 2020 first, and so within it, this is the time to have been resting, to be kind, and to be creating and listening because as we jump season, it's going to be time for 2020 application. And then we'll look back over that. So, yeah. Yeah. And when, you know, the sun, when the sun gets to Aries, there's going to be, you know, you're going to have all three superior planets, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So between that Aries fire to, and I was feeling it already, you know, the sun's out later. I was going up the road and it was like 630 at night or whatever. And I was like, wow, the sun hasn't even set yet. And I was just like feeling that. I had a, a, that moment of like that, just <laughs> like, let's yep. go, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, <laughs> yes. and so when you get that Aries fire combined with that Capricorn drive to like, you know, climb mountains, yeah. that's going to be some, yeah, so, so it's t it like, it really is time to buckle the seatbelt and, and, well, first get, you know, get everything sorted out because pretty soon we're going to be buckling the seatbelt and, and taken off and then yeah eventually have to slow down and come mm. back and, and all that but yeah that's it's sort of like um not necessarily bipolar in the sense that um but it's very you know the energy swings are going to be kind of dramatic it's yeah. going to be like up and then ah, back down and like being able to like flow with that and understand sure yeah, it's going to be key, I think. Yeah, yeah. and Tammy is going to be coming around here shortly, and we're going to talk about the nodes, but that will also bring the sense of, I think, what we need to, to get the year done, you know, coming into that Gemini, it's like, we got to get new thoughts, new communication, new ideas out there, and kind of detach from some things we thought we knew, and maybe it worked for a very long time, but God help you if you're at a Saturn return, it doesn't work anymore, right? Like, we need some new thinking to come yeah. out here, and that is is big too. My experience, I don't know if this is yours, but my experience with the nodes is that typically where they go, we do. 
take on those energies, right? Like sometimes with, with transits and aspects and stuff, we can be like, well, it could come this way, right? With those nodes, I feel like we all just do what we're supposed to do. And that's kind of, I think that that's in there. You can't take it forward with the same old ideas. Mm. It won't work. Yeah, you're talking about Tammy Bronk? Yes. Yeah, right on. Tammy's, yeah, Tammy and I go back a little ways. She's, she's really great. Yeah, the nodes changing signs is, is a big deal, no doubt, you know, because that also means that the eclipses are going to be happening in different places, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, these, these eclipses happening in the cardinal signs on top of all these planets being in the cardinal signs yeah. has been a lot, you know personally I had you know my son my poor son is at 20 degrees Aries it got hammered by Pluto then it got hammered by Saturn and then and I got through both of those and I was like man I, I was like I think I made it and then that that lunar eclipse was like no nope. not quiet you're just so close so <laughs> close though <laughs> so it'll be kind of like a breath of fresh air to get out from under that yeah we, we'll still have the cardinal emphasis for the rest of the year but the node shifting is going to give it's going to change that a little bit where it's like whew, at least we don't have the eclipses to deal with on top of yeah planetary transits yeah and instead we have this like i've got to adapt kind of flow which typically what comes with that is worry right i'm worrying about it and worry is just like a low level form of fear, I think. And so it's like, hey, we're coming to that time where you're like, I don't really know if that's going to work. Don't worry about it, right? But that's kind of the vibe. The whole Gemini thing is, is so it's just about thinking on your feet and just being like, you know, and, and really, and that, and the whole Aquarian thing where I was talking about tuning into the buzz, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, Geminis are incredible at that. They, they, they can create the buzz and then tune into the, the buzz. They, all, they created, created. They get to a different place. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. really amazing how they can, um, they can just be like, you know, butterflies, like <laughs> flitting around all these different flowers and stuff. And so, yeah, like worry and, um, and, and fear. I mean, uh, it's not gonna, it's only gonna sap your energy, drain your battery. Like just show up. Yeah. Trust, trust your instincts, trust uh, trust your connections and do what you can do, you know, and that, and, and be, but be prepared to be like, um, you know, flexible, right? Because mm -hmm. mutable science, it's all about like, hey, you know, it's like sort of the cardinal signs or the CEOs and then the fixed signs are like the middle managers, and then the the, the mutable signs there were known as the common signs. So this is the working class, man. Yeah. It don't matter what the boss said; it's supposed to be like this is what we got. This is the real deal. And, and we got to figure out how to do something with what is actually here. And so that that common sense, that you know, just you know, making it work, figuring it out, you know getting through the day, rigging it up in whatever way you got to do to make it work for today. And then tomorrow we'll get a more permanent fix. Those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. The mutable signs are really good at that. And I and think when our, when our world takes on, especially in a global way, and then looking down, down that, when we take on some big different ideas out there, or we need new solutions, tribing up is the way to go. You've got to laugh. You've got to have people right? You got to have your people because if not, it's just too hard or we get stuck, right? Like we still just get stuck in that old idea and that old phase that we're trying to allow to walk out. And so, you know, seeing worry come out in that way where people are forgetting that, yeah, I got to go out here. I got to tribe up or I got to find the things. And, and you know, what's interesting about that too, is like, if you just like, instead of just worrying, if you speak that to a friend, they'll be like oh all you need is ding ding dang or right. they're like oh man I, you know i've been there done that you know where you can that that mute idea of the mutable like being able to adjust and flow and like having little tricks that they can do to get to make mm -hmm. things work everybody's got that and so when we all lean on each other we're caught we're we're like um, plugging into everybody's toolkit 
and all their little adjustments and tricks and tools of the trade that they have. Oh yeah. We, all of a sudden we're, we're pulling from like this, you know, master toolkit and not just our own, you know, limited one. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking about, honestly, with, um, the South node right now, I'm like, we had an opera, we've had several opportunities to look at what's in that whole bag of tricks. And it's like, just cause it doesn't work for you. Doesn't mean it's not somebody else's glory. You may actually need to hold on to that bad boy to give it away. Interesting. Right? Yeah. I'm like, Hey, some of those behaviors you've adapted are terrible for you now, <laughs> but somebody else doesn't know how to do that at all. So yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that whole thing about um, saving stuff for a rainy day or saving stuff for, I don't know, like, I really wrestle with that because, you know, in, in terms of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, you can accumulate so much stuff. And then I'll, and then I tell you something, man, when it comes to the South Node, one of my main practices is I literally will take stuff to the garbage can like just literally yeah. like clearing out because we just accumulate stuff and and it's like yeah. we've got all this stuff it's taking up space and i think that the 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 process of like getting rid of that stuff whether you give it to somebody maybe who can use it or it just goes into the garbage can or whatever can clear up some space but but yeah that that idea of um of holding on to something. And he, now here's something that I talk about in my book. Think about a lot of, most people don't have any problem giving away something that's no longer useful to them. Sure. But think about giving away something that's actually valuable to you. Mm -hmm. You know, think about giving away something that you still strongly identify with, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's some powerful medicine. That's some powerful medicine. And, um, and you know, you know, like, uh, th that's very hard for a lot of people because what, what happens then is like, oh, you know, for, I used to work with Venus, for instance, for a long time because I, you know, my dream, I had saw Venus in my dream. So it was very important for me to really learn about all her cycles and all that stuff. But at some point I was like, you know what? I need to give that away because I, I want to encourage the women folk to be doing, I mean, that's their planet, you know, right. now, you know, you've got Tammy and all these. Other, so now when it comes to Venus, mostly I just go, yeah, check out what Tammy's doing and check, you know, for a long time, that was really a big part of my practice and everything. And I can still teach on that and talk when it's, you know, in individual consults or whatever, but, you know, there came a time where I was like, yeah, okay, I did what I did, had to do with that. And now it's time to mm -hmm. pass along to let it go and, and, um, and yeah, and find some new medicine, right? Right. <laughs> That's the brilliance though, right? Like when you saw that it didn't work anymore, it's like, okay, time to transition that bad boy out there. And I'm thinking a lot too about the clients I'm seeing and what they're giving away that's still valuable to them is even the idea of coming out of hiding and giving their skills away and being and having the courage to understand how to charge for that. How do we do this? How mm. do I, right? Because that is sometimes that's quite scary. It was a scary transition for me. And I think I'm getting people who now need that experience that I went through. And I'm like, oh, just do this, right? Like you said, I'm like, you. I'm just telling you now in the video, y'all, if you want to start a business, I can tell you how to do that. I cried my way through starting one and it's working out. So <laughs> experience is available, right? Yeah. And that's really valuable experience because, yes. you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there who um, they have actually plenty of knowledge, plenty of experience, but they just haven't taken that step mm -hmm. of like, stepping into it and really trying to apply it to like business type situations. And that's a whole nother deal. Yeah. You can be really good and really knowledgeable. And yet when it comes to like putting that in terms of making a business happen, it's, it's a whole nother deal. And yeah. So yeah. In fact, I had that come up recently where, you know, I had somebody who was talking about, they had, um, 
something that they had created that was I thought of, and they were thinking about just giving it away, and um, and seeing, you know letting people oh just make a donation love offering or whatever, and I was like, you know you <laughs> might because like you know the strange part and the strange part about that is when you give it away somehow people perceive that as a different uh, lacking value whereas if you say hey i'm going to give you a little taste and then you know if you want the rest you know here's the mm -hmm. price and so on there's a difference in the perceived value yeah a, a, big, a big difference and i think that there is a difference in the level of spiritual participation as well right like we have both agreed on this amount we have both agreed on the terms and it means we're both coming together willingly to yeah. participate and yeah. that changes so interactions the yeah they're going to show up and do the work when they paid right but if it's free uh they might be distracted they might be you know they aren't even really there yeah yeah uh, and, and i even know that i mean god I just love Costco. I don't know how many samples I have when I walk through that thing because they're free. And I'm like, I'm not buying these chicken wings, but you gave me a free chicken wing. So I took it. You know, there's no investment. Right. And I'm like, you know, probably a character defect on my part, but chicken wings that are free are delicious. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I bought her chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I get it. It's part of like the it's part of like the way that we've been sort of um, you know behaviorally sort of um, modeled too. Like there's a whole you know there's a whole sort of science or psychology that goes along with marketing where we're so used to seeing things being marketed a certain way that with that that's really the only way that will trigger us into behaving a certain way is when it's following that that pattern that we're already familiar with. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, but marketing and the business side of it is a trip and it is, it's hard. It's really, and it, there's, yeah, that knowledge that, and that wisdom that you have is, is probably as precious or more precious than the, than the knowledge you have about the art and science of astrology. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's very, very difficult for spiritual people to really let, you know, a lot of people have a really hard time with that. Some people are just really natural and they tend to actually do better than, um, you know, they may not be as technically skilled, but they, but they do, you know, they go farther because their business skills are so strong. Right. Right. You, know I mean? you see a lot of people, there was this one cat who came in from the marketing, you know, he was a professional at marketing. And he came into the astrology world and he, with a fairly limited skill set, he kind of hit the ground running and did really well because he was so strong in those, in that business area. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a trip, the business part of it, but um, yeah, with the, with the nodes changing signs, I think that, um, that, you know, the what Gemini and Sagittarius, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that, with the Sagittarius thing, I think that um, really um, understanding our, our, tr our higher truths and our, and our ideals and our, um, and like our really, our philosophical, gui you know, guides and really um, retuning those like, what do I actually believe in? Yes, right. After I've been to hell and back, what do I still believe in? Mm -hmm. You know, because faith, faith is super, super powerful. And you can't go through life without some amount. You wouldn't be here if you had lost all your faith. You just wouldn't even be. You can't, you cannot exist without some amount of faith. And whatever it is, you have faith in something, even if it's just you right so it's something something has got the faith attention yeah but what and why that is what i think is exciting that people are going well no wait a minute why do i believe in that right sag is i have a sag at my house and it's the eternal why and i'm like because i'm your mom 
right? Like that's that's where I go. I'm limited there. But the why? Why do I do what I do? Why do I believe what I believe? Why am I in this relationship? Why do I keep going to this job? Right? Why? Yeah. Seriously. Uh huh. And the why is is basically a question of like when somebody asks why, um, they're asking two things at the same time. They're asking like mm, sort of what's the sort of intellectual or or you know justification for that belief. They're asking for like what is the foundation? What is the the stuff that's under that belief? Like mm -hmm. show me what's holding that up. Is it solid? right yeah. um and you know because i'm your mom is pretty solid right so that <laughs> if it's my house <laughs> at least until okay. somebody's 18 slash 30 my house <laughs> my house that's pretty solid right but so they're asking that but they're also asking i think um yeah do you really believe that mm -hmm. do you really believe it like it, like believe it in a way like that's like like or is it just one of those things that you tell yourself, you know, to get through the day and like, you know, get along with your neighbors and yada, yada. Mm -hmm. They're trying to parse out like, is it a, is it a belief as in like just one of those everyday kind of things that gets us through? Or is it like one of those really big ones that's like plugged into some higher archetypal realm that I can like, you know, that I can ride to a higher place, you yeah. know? Yeah. Kind of, is it that kind of belief you know which is um, so neat when it's when it's grounded and connected to something bigger the way people move the way that they express behind these ideas is different and it usually is it can be um it's not so entirely emotional either there's thought behind it besides right. just a, an emotional response Right, which is just beautiful when we see ourselves moving in ways that actually you can justify it. It's not just a theory in your life, right? There's like an experience and a connection. So I feel like we just have gone like so to the left of Mercury retrograde, but y'all got some good information out there. Hopefully, Gary, I'm gonna have, we're, we have to wrap it up. Let these people yes, live do. their lives, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. And, You're and very I hope welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe, share your feedback down below. What has Mercury brought out for you? We'd love to know. And um, you can definitely check out Gary's book. You can check out Gary. You can do all of that. I'll put his links in the description box down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.